for representing the same stuff. Generally, it's easier to create a list rather than an array because lists don't require you to determine ahead of time how many elements you need to allocate. Uh, you can add elements to a list when creating the list or after creating the list by calling the add method. So there is this add method for you which can be used for adding values to the list. Okay, so let's have a quick uh, look at uh, this. I'll just copy this part of the code and let me uh, go to Salesforce and have a look at what we get. Yeah, so I'm here and uh, logged in in Salesforce. Let me go to the developer console. So I'm here on the developer console and uh, I'll quickly try to uh, take the code from there. I've already copied this small piece of code from here, depending on the list. Let's go to the developer console, paste it here. All right. So if you look at this, currently this is a list of string or you can rather call it an array of string and it contains three values. And if you want to add more values to it, you can simply uh, use the other line of code here, which was uh, uh, using this uh, add function. Okay, I think they have here they have defined one more variable for it. We are not gonna you know define one more variable. Let me just go and add uh, one more value to the same variable. Colors dot add and then you say black. All right. So that's it. So. Uh, initially, you have defined a variable called colors, which is a list of string. It is having three values here. Next line, you uh, used a method, dot add method for adding another value to the list. Uh, I can define one more variable here. Uh, like the one that we see there, more colors equals new list of string. And you can define it this way, and then you can add more colors. Dot add colors. Uh, let's quickly go back and take the other part from here. Let's take this entire thing from here. Paste it here. Yeah, that's better. So I've defined two variables. The first one, which initially uh, had three values, and then I added one more value there. The second variable, more colors, where I have added. So this way, you can keep on adding more values to it. So this is how list can be defined. Now let's continue further on the unit that we were talking about uh, list elements can be read by specifying an index between square brackets just like with array elements so you can actually retrieve the value from a particular index numbers using this dot get method uh, so let's quickly do this and then check how it works okay so before we move into that part let's quickly see you know how the values of the list have been defined let me remove this one also and uh, here is the list so initially i've just defined the list okay uh, now let me add a line of code here which is system dot debug and then i'll say system dot debug colors Okay, so system.debug uh, method will basically uh, help you debug the value of this particular variable. Now let's quickly execute this and then I'm gonna check it in the logs and we will just check the debug logs. Yeah, it returns red, green, blue. So three uh, colors variable actually holds these three values. So we are pretty good. Let me add 
the second line of code also here i is going to add colors dot add let me add black so now it should return me yeah there it is so now system dot uh, debug should return those four values red green blue and black let's have a quick look let's execute uh open the debug log yeah red green blue black that's what we get uh let me also try to uh, get the size of the list so for that i can do system dot debug uh, colors dot size so it should give me the number of strings that i have in this list i think i don't need this one this time i just need the size so i can undo with this click on execute uh, let me have a quick look at the debug logs let me close the previous one I think the other one is also open yeah, it returns four so there are four values in the list right so this way there are several methods which can be used now uh, let's quickly uh, write the get method as we can see that there's a get method which can be used uh, for retrieving a value from a particular index number from the list so let's go and grab the value the first value in the list will have index zero so now if you look at this list uh, this will have index zero this is going to be index one this is going to be index two so let's have a quick look at this uh, let me try to retrieve uh, the value using yeah so i will use a variable string my color equals colors dot get and i say one so index one should ideally return green right so it's red green blue and so red is having index zero this is index one this is index two so it should ideally return uh, green so i'll say system dot b work this time i don't want to see the size i just want my color to be returned here click on execute let's have a quick look at the debug logs yeah it returns green right so we have seen you know how we can actually work with a list so next thing that uh, we have here in this unit is a you know about apex classes but before we jump into apex classes there is a small uh, piece of beyond the basics available here so apex supports two other collection types we have talked about list apart from that if you remember well you were having a quick look at the data types which are supported here uh, we saw there are two more uh, data types a set and a map so it says apex supports two other collection types set and map you can learn about these in the collections section in the apex developers guide you can do that or you can join one of my training programs that's where we you know discuss these things a little more in details uh, let's move on to the next uh, uh, section which is apex classes one of the benefits of uh, the apex class is code reuse so why would you actually so we have seen now uh, we have already seen that we are able to uh, write the code and we can execute it from the developer console uh, the question is you know why would then i go ahead and create the class and save the code and write the methods and all that stuff so the simple answer to that is reusability so apex uh, you know gives you the benefit of uh, creating classes so that the code can be reused and to create your apex class you can actually do it from the developer console right from the developer console file new apex class so uh seems uh, you know here we have got a small piece of code for the apex class which actually has a method let me copy this in that code and let's go and create a class here in the developer console so i can go to file new apex class and give it a name let's take the name this email manager is the name of the class let's put the same name yeah it has created the class now let me copy the code here 
and I pasted the code let me try copying this one more time okay I got pasted actually right. excellent yeah so uh, we have a class here and inside the class if you can see this uh, there's a method which has been defined now uh, you can actually uh, read the code inside this method and understand for details you can uh, join one of the training programs where I can explain things to you in details but you want know, to quickly understand what exactly this method is going to do uh, this method is going to use three parameters uh, email address subject and body and it's going to send an email and if the email is uh, successful if the sending of email is successful then it will return it can uh, you know debug email sent successfully otherwise it should uh, you know debug this is following error circuit right so once we execute this uh, we should be able to uh, you know check the debug logs to check whether the email was sent successfully or it was not sent successfully so that's what we have here uh, i think we're good so the class has been created let me save this so yeah the class has been created it has been saved let's see what is the next step that we are required to do uh, click control s to save your class here we have already saved the class now call a method to send an email so the method that is defined inside the class needs to be called and uh, we can call that method to send that email right to send the uh, call the method we are going to again use the execute anonymous window and uh, this is the code that i would need for that so let me go to debug execute anonymous window i don't need those things anymore i need this one now here as I told you, there are three parameters which are being used in this particular method. So you can simply uh, define your email address. So there are three parameters: email address, the one uh, you want the uh, want the email to be sent to, subject, and the email body. So here you can put your email address. Info at Tom. Okay. I write my subject line and then I write my new body. 